Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today we are in episode number 230. As always, I'm Shane Thomas. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at smthomas3. Today we're going to be talking about the field defaults module. So if you've ever had a Drupal site and you've needed to add a new field to a content type or an entity and you wanted that field to have a default value, but you have a bunch of existing content, sometimes that can cause a problem because you want that default value to apply to that existing content, but it doesn't. So it's kind of frustrating if you have a thousand articles and you wanted something to default. Every time you go in and edit one of those past articles, especially if the field is required, it's gonna flag it and say, hey, you need to select a value for this. When in reality, you just wanted it to be that default. So let's take a look. It's going to make a lot of sense once we start to look at it. So I'm on the drupal.org page for the field defaults module. And you can see it says field defaults allows batch updating of default field values to existing content. We're going to use the 8.x-1.1 version today. And if we head to our Drupal site, you can see we have it installed. As far as permissions, there's just one for administer field defaults. And the configuration page, if you go to configuration system field default settings, just has one checkbox. So there's not a lot to it. This allows you to keep the updated time the same. So if you just change the default value and you click save on a content type, it's not going to make it look like that content type was updated. So we're going to leave this off, but if you are using that updated time for anything like views, anything like that, you might not want all your content on your site to look like it was updated when you change the default value. So if we go to content types, we're just going to pick one and we're going to go to article and we're going to manage fields. So you can see I have all my fields here. I'm going to go and just, I have this example field. I'm going to go here and Everything's going to look pretty much the same except this default value section. So there's an update existing content section. So you can say overwrite existing English content with the selected default values. Or there's keep existing values, which if you do check the second one, it will allow anything that already had a value to keep its whatever value was set. So let's take a look at some of our content quick. And if I go to just any of these articles, you can notice there's nothing in this example, uh, this example field. If we give it a default value, and this probably works better with, um, you know, drop downs where you know select boxes, things like that. You know, maybe radio buttons where you actually want it to default to something. But in this case, um, it can work with any field. So it doesn't matter if it's a text area, you know, a select, a, a number field, whatever, whatever you might have as far as your fields. So let's say we want to overwrite existing English content and we save it. This is going to start a batch process. It's going to go through and it's going to update all the articles on the site and set the default value. So as you can see, it works. Um, it doesn't actually set the text format, which is kind of unfortunate. But again, you're probably going to be using this for select boxes, you know, more of list type things where you have maybe you know taxonomy terms, something like that, where you have a category and you want to default to a certain category unless you decide to override it. That's really all there is to it. It's a super simple module. You know, you turn it on, there's a couple check boxes, and that's it. It just works. Those are, those are sometimes some of the most useful modules because it saves you time from having to try to write something to go update the database if you have a bunch of content and you just wanted to set a default value. So go check out the field defaults module. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Make sure you're checking out CodeCrowdy.com. Sign up for the newsletter. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.